All right, little hairs, you need to go someplace else. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about something that a lot of people have requested I talk about, and that is beta readers. I'm currently in the beta reading, beta reading, beta reader, whatever. I'm currently in the beta reading stage with my second novel, the sequel to Blood of Fire. And so I think that's the reason why a lot of people have been asking things like, how do you find beta readers? What can I expect during the beta reading process? What do you do with beta readers? How many beta readers do you choose? And so on and so forth. So today I wanted to answer some of those questions. So the first question is, what is a beta reader? So basically a beta reader is someone who reads your book over usually after most of your edits have been done so that it's an okay book that you would want someone to read and then give you a critique and feedback on. These people are usually the first ones to see your book. And of course, this version of your book isn't going to be the finished version, but it's usually something that isn't completely first draft, still really wonky. I met my step goal just by gesturing around. Second question I get asked, probably most often is where do you find beta readers? So there's a few places that you can try to find them. Um, the first place you could look is to ask friends and family. And this is usually what I do because I do happen to have friends and family who are avid readers and I have friends who are also writers. The cool thing about asking friends and family is if they don't exactly like your work, they're usually going to be a little bit nicer about delivering that news. However, on the flip side, if there is something they really don't like about your book or they feel like really needs work on, they might be less apt to tell you because they don't want to hurt your feelings because obviously there is a personal relationship between you guys. The beta readers that I chose for Blood of Fire were a good mix of the two of those things. They didn't go on and on about all the things that they hated about the book and they also didn't just offer nothing but praise. They were pretty well balanced between the two and I think that's what a really good beta reader should be. Another place you can look is writing groups, whether that's online writing groups, especially through Facebook, or through a writing group that you maybe go to in person. I happen to be part of several writing groups on Facebook, and many of the admins in these groups often do a sort of shout out or a periodic post where people who are looking for beta readers can find them, and likewise people who are willing to beta read and would like to maybe be the first people to read someone's new book can find writers who are searching for beta readers. How many times can I say beta reader in one video? <laughs> The other thing I like about finding beta readers in writing groups is you will often find that a lot of writing groups, especially online, will often have a similar theme or genre. For instance, I'm in a writing group that is mostly fantasy writers, or at least people who write fantasy the majority of the time. Since Blood of Fire is a young adult fantasy book, of course I wanted to reach out to people who are familiar with that genre and who are interested in it. Another place you can look for beta readers is social media, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or wherever. Through a quick search of the hashtags, I did find on Instagram anyway that there are some hashtags like beta readers, beta readers wanted, and stuff like that where you can maybe find people who are looking for that. Another thing I found on social media is that there's actually people who run accounts where they're actively marketing themselves as a professional beta reader. In some cases, you might need to pay these people. I've never actually reached out to one myself, but it is an option if you're willing to pay someone or if you're willing to do a trade. And that goes into another question I'm often asked is, do you need to pay beta readers? And the answer to that is generally no. You shouldn't be expected to pay beta readers, and usually beta readers shouldn't expect to be paid. However, if you have it in your budget to pay them or to give them some sort of incentive or maybe some sort of swag or something, then go ahead and do that. But generally, you're not expected to pay beta readers. Oftentimes, you can also pay beta readers through trade. So for instance, if someone beta reads my book, they might ask me to beta read for them. So that way you're both getting a win-win situation out of it. And though there are some people who call themselves professional beta readers, it's not exactly the same caliber as someone who is a professional trained editor, such as a content editor or something like that, who has years of experience and usually gets paid quite a bit for their services. And yes, of course, you would want to go through beta readers before you pay a professional editor to do a more in-depth analysis of your book and offer suggestions based on that. The thing about beta reading is you, you want to pursue beta readers when you're at a stage in your writing where it's about as good as you can get it on your own, but you just need some extra suggestions or to have some other eyes on your work. And since it's not expected to be a completely polished, almost ready to be published work, 
it's not really necessary to find a really high caliber editor who has years of experience who can add additional editing and suggestions that maybe your beta reading friend or family member can't quite offer. Another question I get asked quite a bit is how many beta readers I use. I've heard a lot of different answers to this question from different writers. I've heard some people go so far as to have 30 or maybe even 40 beta readers or more. To me, I think that's just way too many cooks in the kitchen. But for me personally, I probably wouldn't look for more than 20 to 25 tops. The reason you want to ask a good number of people is because People are people. People are human and we have human things to do that sometimes don't involve reading someone's book. When I was doing the beta reading stage for Blood of Fire, I didn't really have many friends or acquaintances in the online writing community, so I only could ask friends and family that I knew personally and had known for years. And when I did that, I think I asked maybe seven or eight people, and in the end I think I had four or five who actually finished beta reading and offered suggestions. So it is nice to ask a higher number of people, but you definitely shouldn't expect all of them to finish reading your work and to get back to you within your set deadline. Because like I said, we're all human and things happen, we get busy, or maybe someone realizes they're not that interested in your book and they don't feel like they're a good fit for it, especially if your genre is so different from what they prefer to read. So for instance, if I asked someone to read my young adult fantasy novel and they really only read nonfiction, they might get bored or realize that it's not really their cup of tea, so they can't really give an accurate critique on the work because they're not really familiar with that genre. They're not my target audience, so it wouldn't really make sense to ask them or to expect them to give really good feedback. And of course, another thing to keep in mind is who you're asking to beta read, besides whether or not you know them. Some people think that you should only ask for beta readers that are exactly your target audience. Some people think you should have mostly writers. Personally, I think you should have a mix of both. Ideally, you would have beta readers that are at least interested and familiar with your genre, even if they aren't exactly the target audience. And you definitely want to ask people who enjoy reading, otherwise they're probably not going to have much fun and they're not going to really be able to give you very good feedback on your book. I think it's really smart to have a mix of people who are primarily readers and people who are primarily writers, although, you know, writers usually read a lot too. They can both offer a different viewpoint about your story. So, for instance, someone who is an avid reader, especially within your target audience, would be able to analyze the book for its enjoyment factor. They'd be able to tell you if it's something that they think other people who also like that genre enjoy reading. They could probably compare it to similar books within your genre, which is actually something that can help you later on when you're trying to pitch your book to other people. So for instance, you could say, my book is a lot like The Hunger Games. So if you like The Hunger Games, you'll like this, which is something I've heard a lot about Blood of Fire. On the other hand, writers can offer the more technical side of writing and creating a book. If you have writerly beta readers who are really familiar with the publishing industry, they could potentially offer some insight into how you might want to market it, and they can also tell you whether or not your grammar's right, or if you're potentially writing yourself into a plot hole, and they're just a little bit more analytical about the writing side of things rather than is this just an enjoyable book? Another common question is what should I ask my beta readers? So what I typically do is I send my manuscript off to the beta readers and of course I want them to read it and then give their just overall thoughts. A lot of beta readers, which this is something I find really helpful, a lot of them will offer inline comments as they go along, such as by actually creating a note or comment in the Word doc. And then a lot of them will sort of give a summary of what they thought overall. I always like to send along a list of specific questions that I want them to answer. And the important thing to remember with the questions that you send is to make sure that you're sending unbiased, open-ended questions that allow them to elaborate on something rather than just saying yes or no. And by unbiased, I mean you don't want to phrase a question like, do you think my protagonist is boring? Because you're suggesting that you think your protagonist might be boring and they might start to think, actually, now that you mention it, your protagonist is boring as crap. A better question might be, what did you think of my protagonist? You don't want to accidentally sway their opinion one way or the other. You just want them to be able to say outright what they thought and maybe elaborate on why they thought that way. Another common question you could ask is, what were your favorite parts of the story and why? What was your least favorite part of the story and why? What did you think of the pacing? Was there any character that you connected with specifically? I could definitely come up with a full list of questions, but 
that would be kind of hard to include here. So maybe that's something that I'll write in my blog if someone would like that. So if you'd like a list of example questions, definitely leave a comment below and I can potentially write one up in my blog and then submit a link to it. Another common question is how long should I give my beta readers to read my book? And this really depends on the length of the manuscript. So if it's a thousand page epic journey, it's going to take a lot longer than say a 20,000 word story. You definitely want to make sure that you give a fair amount of time, but also make sure that you don't just give them months and months so they have enough time to forget about it. I can't exactly remember what I did for Blood of Fire, but with Trail of Flames, the book that my beta readers are currently reading, I gave them about a month. And my book right now is around 90,000 words, and the people I submitted it to are pretty quick readers, so I wasn't really worried that many of them would take longer than a month, but of course, if they do, depending on how far they are in the book and how much longer they think they'll need to finish it, then I might extend for them. For Blood of Fire, I broke my book up into two parts, which it's already broken up into two parts, but I ended up giving them part one first, and then I think I waited for each of them to contact me and say that they were done and wanted part two, but this time around I realized it didn't really make much sense, so I just sent the entire manuscript all at once so that they could read at their own pace, and I didn't have to constantly babysit my messages to see if they were waiting for part two. So I believe I passed along my manuscript to them around the end of January, and right now it is February 12th. So since today is around the middle of the month and I hadn't heard back from anyone yet, I decided to send the group a message basically saying, hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to just check in with everyone and see where you are in the manuscript, and just to send a reminder that I would like it back by the end of the month. And fortunately, some of them are finished, some of them are nearing the end, some of them think they'll be done by this weekend, so it is smart to make sure you keep tabs on their progress, but to also not be really pushy and annoying about it, because again, they are doing this service for you for free, so you want to make sure that you always express how grateful you are that they're doing it, and to not make them feel pressured to hurry, so you don't want to seem negative about it at all, because they're doing this service for you, out of the goodness of their hearts and because they're interested in your story. And this is a less common question that I've seen, but I did want to address it. I've seen some people ask, should I be worried that my baiters will steal my work? I've heard a lot of other people answer this question with, no, that's ridiculous. The odds of them stealing it is pretty slim. And also they're going to be stealing an unrefined book. So why would they bother if they do try to pass off as their own? and sell it, then it's not going to be that great. But ever since my published book was plagiarized on Amazon, I've been a little bit more protective of my book and a little less trusting of strangers. And I definitely don't want to get into the whole story about my book being stolen, so I'm going to leave a link to that video either in the cards up above or down below in the description so that you guys can <laughs> see that whole story. But obviously, since that happened to me, it did make me less eager to reach out to strangers or brief acquaintances through social media for beta readers, which is kind of unfortunate that a bad apple sort of uh, ruined things for me a little bit, because I've met a lot of awesome people in the writing community that I think would give really great feedback. And that's not to say I would never give my unpublished book to someone to read because I don't trust anyone. So I think the odds are that you're going to meet more people who are going to be trustworthy and eager to read your book rather than finding scam artists who are trying to steal it. But uh, yeah, that has been a worry of mine. So in this case, I really only once again sent my manuscript to people that I already knew and trusted in the real world, not really just people that I've only known online. And by saying this, I don't want to scare anyone into thinking that they shouldn't go through the beta reading process because they're afraid this will happen to them. You should definitely use beta readers, and if you don't know anyone in your personal, real-world life that you trust to read your book and give a good, good critique, then definitely reach out to writing groups or people that you're at least somewhat acquainted with and feel like are decent people. <laughs> on social media to see if they'll read your work for you. And if for some reason you are really nervous about sending your work to people, always keep in mind that once your piece of writing exists, whether that's an actual hard copy that you can hold in your hands or an electronic written document, legally that belongs to you. No one else owns the copyright except you. So if anyone did try to do anything with it, they would be breaking the law and you could definitely pursue that. One thing you can do is to make sure that you include a copyright on the document itself, just a little 
a little C and your name and the date and stuff like that. Include your last name and a page number on every single page of the document. And I know in... I was gonna say WordPerfect. Does anyone use WordPerfect anymore? In Microsoft Word, I know you can restrict editing and lock the document so that people can't make any changes to it. So that should help deter or at least make it more difficult for someone to steal your work. But with all of that said, <laughs> again, the odds of someone trying to steal your work is pretty slim. And I don't want that to prevent people from trying to pursue beta reading or to pursue publication in general. My camera cut me off right as I was finishing that sentence, so that was weirdly good timing. So I think that's all I have for you guys today. I hope I answered some of your questions about beta reading. If you have any more questions for me, leave a comment below and I will try to answer them as I see them, or even potentially film a second video if I have enough questions. If you guys like this video and found it useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're interested in reading Blood of Fire, it is available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format and that link will also be in the description, as well as my other social media, including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Goodreads. So until next time, see ya!